this next question that we got, we don't normally do these like, help me like make a judgment call here, but this one just baked my noodle so hard. I had to include it because I want to know what you guys think. Oh yeah, this is this is an important subject. Uh, Justin, would you please read the question? I would read it, but I think that would weird people out because it's just not what we do. At a gaming convention last summer, a what? I needed a gaming convention uh, last summer. I needed to quickly grab lunch between panels. I was moderating. The line at the food truck was huge, so I walked to the person who was first in line and offered to pay them for their meal if they ordered for me too. Ugh. My friend says this was the same as cutting in line and was bad. I think it's more like Postmates, where I paid someone to get lunch for me, but on the other hand, I recognize that this increased the wait in line for the time it would take to cook my order. I'm worried my friend might be right. They are. So I haven't done this since then. Brothers, was I cutting in line or no? And that's from genuinely concerned at Gen Con. Let's... Yes, this was bad. Bit. I got the I got one of Thanos' cool stones, and I snap my fingers, and the thing changes. Okay, what if instead of going to the person in the front of the line and saying like, "Hey, it's like Postmates. You work for Hey, look, you work for me now." Instead of that, what if your buddy is like clo- like in the middle of the line or close to the front of the line? You're like, "Ooh, shit. Hey, can you go ahead and get me a burrito too?" Is that bad? No. This is what I'm saying. I don't think this is bad. I think what it is, is it's revolutionary. And sometimes when something is revolutionary, it can seem bad. It can seem scary at the time. But then we look back on it in the future and it's like, wow, on that day, they changed the game of ordering at food trucks. Now, here's the problem. If everyone starts to do this, there's going to be one person in line who's ordering (laughs) 500 meals. I I I have a new plan. Stand at the front of the line with a stack of 20 U.S. dollar bills. Uh As people have um, received their order, in the moment, in the flush of victory upon receiving their order, you offer to buy, hey, can I have three chips? Can I just have three chips for this one dollar bill? You won't want those three chips by the time you're done consuming your dish. Mm -hmm. Just give me three chips. And then I think you can just sort of... (laughs) Give me one you know, bite of your burrito. It's like food antiquing. You know, you're just you're just getting a little bit off the top. You're at the it, sampler table. You're getting your points on the back end. Exactly. What if there was 60 windows on this, what is now becoming a sort of food train, and you have to catch up with the food train? <sighs> okay, listen. Can I hit you guys? Stop the podcast, and let's talk about food train for a second, okay. right? What if there was a single train track that wound its way through this great land we called America? And there are food train stops wherever, like all throughout the country, right? But it's just the one train and the one train track. And then when you started to get a line, you have like a single car, right? And it, people are lining up there at the carnival because it's in town for the carnival that you're having. All events will take place on the food train track, okay? So you, you, if the line gets to be more than two people in line, another car on the food train comes and joins that one. And all of a sudden, you got twice as many windows. No one is waiting. If those people dissipate, the food train goes to the next station where it is needed. Do you understand? It's infinite capacity. And it only does hamburgers. <laughs> Now, away. this idea beats so much ass that it's going to become the only legal way to obtain food. Now, we've entered into a program that I would like to call Snack Piercer. Okay. And in this one, we have to, we, you have to live on Burger Train. I stand by Food Train, though. I feel pretty Don't good. Don't stand close to Food investors. Train. The oils, they have hot oils inside. And when yeah. it takes a turn... <laughs> That's why only automatons can work on food train. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Every yeah. surface on food train is a broiler. We couldn't afford to just have single bo- every surface. This is on a there hot, wet food. robot train, and it will annihilate you. And now you might you might want to get on because we have bulldozed every forest in America to make way for this train track. We get that. If you want to get on because the- it's bad out here. 
It is a these hot, sexy robots are grilling the burgers on their chests and peeling them off for you, a delighted carnival goer. And they're peeling them off each other's chests. It's sexy in there. We it's get why you'd want to get on the train, but do you gotta not. gotta resist the siren song of the robot food train. If you get on this sexy, hot, wet, greasy train, you will die. This is I don't know why the scientists made them all look like Mark Ruffalo. I, I don't, don't understand. understand. But guys, this sexy burger train will fuck you up, fam. Listen, the Ruffalo bots are grilling hamburgers on each other's chests <laughs> and delivering them to your town whether you like it or not. Do not get on this train or you will die. But also do not miss the train because it's the only it's the food only opportunity food you have left. Exists. This train is delicious and it is uninsured. There will be no one to care for your family. No recompense will be made for your death on we food We did train. use all of our resources to create both the food train and the Ruffalo bots. Nothing is left for healthcare. We are so sorry, but please enjoy this burger. That's $5.99. <laughs>